Let's talk about thin privilege. Thin privilege is defined as the power and advantages systematically accorded to people with thinner and smaller bodies. Some examples of thin privilege include not being denied medical care because of your weight, airlines not charging you more money to fly, and being more likely to get a raise or promotion than your fat counterparts. As well as everyday seemingly mundane things like being able to comfortably fit into public transit seats and even hospital gowns. A lot of people have argued that thin privilege isn't real because thin people have also experienced body shaming for being too thin and have body image issues like everybody else. But as Christy Harrison beautifully put, having thin privilege doesn't mean that you've never had any body image issues or that you've never struggled with disordered eating or that you've never been bullied or shamed by people for your size. Fat phobia goes beyond bullying. It includes being dehumanized and systematically ignored and discriminated against in healthcare, education, employment, you name it. As a small fat who is also white, I experience both thin privilege and white privilege. Therefore, even though I may get some rude messages or comments about my body, I'm still seen as a more acceptable level of fat than someone, for instance, who's a mid fat or super fat. And if you don't know what mid-fat or super-fat means, here is a helpful infographic of the fatness spectrum. Of course, as with everything, intersectionality is super important. Somebody like me, who's a white small fat, will have a vastly different experience than someone who is both black and a super-fat, and vice versa. The experiences we have are completely different, as well as the way we are perceived and treated in the world. And I absolutely benefit from thin privilege. I know that as a size 16, I can go to the doctor and I'm more likely to have my symptoms taken seriously. I can semi-comfortably fit in an airplane seat and I know that I have the benefit of living in a white society where I have never experienced racism. The treatment of fat people gets worse once you consider things like size, race, gender, and income. And privilege highlights the systemic disparity in the treatment between fat people and non-fat people. And because people usually get really angry whenever thin privilege or privilege in general is mentioned, this is not an attack on thin people. This is a critique of the fat phobia that's embedded within society and how fat phobia pervades life in seemingly trivial, mundane ways. Take some time to think about how you might benefit from or be harmed by thin privilege and how you might perpetuate fat phobia in your daily life. The idea of thin privilege refers to the societal advantages that people who are thin or within the accepted range of body weight may experience, such as being able to find clothing that fits easily or are not facing discrimination in hiring or other areas due to their weight. However, when it comes to paying more for plane seats or not fitting comfortably in public transit seats or hospital gowns, this is not an issue of thin privilege. Instead, it is a matter of practicality and safety for everyone involved. Airplanes, for example, have weight restrictions and safety regulations that require evenly distributing the weight of passengers and their belongings throughout the plane. If someone is significantly larger than the average passenger, it may require more space, and therefore more resources, to ensure that they are safely and comfortably accommodated. As a result, Airlines may charge extra for larger seats or require that a passenger purchase an additional seat. Similarly, public transit seats and hospital gowns are designed to accommodate the average person. If someone is significantly larger, they may not fit in the seats or gowns comfortably or safely, which can be problematic in crowded or emergency situations. It is not a matter of discrimination or privilege but rather practicality and safety concerns. It is important to note that discrimination based on weight or size is a real issue, and it is important to address and fight against it. However, the issue of paying more for accommodations or not fitting in standard seats or gowns is not an example of thin privilege but rather an issue of practicality and safety for everyone involved. Great question. It's a privilege to have time to exercise. It's a privilege to have the ability to afford a gym membership. It's a privilege to be able to fit into gym machines. It's a privilege to know what to do in a gym. It's also a privilege to live in the vicinity where a gym is. If you saw one of my last videos, I talk about how gyms are built in certain affluent areas. It's a privilege to be able to get outside into a safe neighborhood and walk or jog. It's a privilege to be able-bodied enough to exercise. It's a privilege to be able to afford the right clothes to exercise in. It's a privilege to be able to easily find clothes that fit you to exercise in. It's a privilege to not feel intimidated when walking into a gym. 
It's a privilege to not feel like you shouldn't be somewhere just because of your size or your gender. And it's also a privilege to have the time, the access or the money to cook so-called health foods. So yeah, it's a privilege. Living a healthy lifestyle can be seen as a privilege because it requires access to resources and knowledge that not everyone may have. Some examples of resources that can make it easier to live a healthy lifestyle include access to fresh and healthy food options, safe and affordable places to exercise, and the ability to take time off from work to prioritize self-care. In addition, Having access to accurate information and education on healthy habits can also be a privilege, as not everyone may have access to this information or may have conflicting information. However, it is important to note that the fact that living a healthy lifestyle may be a privilege does not mean that it is acceptable or healthy to be obese. Obesity is a medical condition that can lead to serious health problems, such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease and high blood pressure. While there are a variety of factors that can contribute to obesity, including genetics, environment, and lifestyle choices, it is important to recognize the negative health consequences associated with obesity. It is important to work towards creating an environment where everyone has access to the resources and knowledge needed to live a healthy lifestyle. This can include advocating for policies that support healthy eating and physical activity providing education and resources to underserved communities, and promoting a culture that values and prioritizes self-care. At the same time, it is important to recognize the importance of taking personal responsibility for one's own health and making choices that promote a healthy lifestyle. Sorry, not everybody fits in the bad bitch genre. It's a genre. It is absolutely okay to want to lose or maintain a healthy body weight for the sake of your health. Maintaining a healthy weight can have a number of positive health benefits, such as reducing the risk of chronic diseases like heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. It can also improve overall quality of life, including reducing joint pain, improving sleep quality, and increasing energy levels. Additionally, Wanting to lose or maintain a healthy weight can be a sign of self-care and self-respect. Taking care of one's body by maintaining a healthy weight can be an important part of an overall approach to health and well-being. It is important to note, however, that the pursuit of a healthy body weight should not become an unhealthy obsession or be taken to extremes. It is possible to develop an unhealthy relationship with food and exercise and it is important to prioritize a healthy mindset and approach to weight management. It is also important to recognize that there is no perfect body weight or size, and that everyone's body is unique. Ultimately, the decision to pursue a healthy weight should be based on individual health goals and should be approached in a healthy and balanced way, including through regular exercise and a balanced, nutrient-rich diet. just dawned on me how many people don't understand how rarely fat people actually receive evidence-based medicine from doctors. One time I went in for an ear infection and the doctor told me to lose weight. You know what thin people get? Antibiotics. One time I found a lump and I made an emergency appointment to get a cancer screening. It was at an OBGYN and as soon as the doctor walked in, he didn't look at me, he didn't introduce himself, he looked at my chart and he said, You'd have an easier time getting pregnant if you lost weight. I told him, I'm not here for fertility treatment, I'm here for a cancer screening. And he said, oh, okay, and started the appointment, never said sorry. And I would need to make a 20-part series for the saga I went through last year when I needed spinal surgery for a lifelong spinal defect that had nothing to do with my weight. And this is the norm. It's typical for this to happen. A doctor may prescribe weight loss as a treatment option for a patient who is obese even if that isn't the primary reason for the patient's visit. This is because obesity is a significant risk factor for a number of chronic health conditions, such as heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. Therefore, addressing obesity through weight loss can be an important part of a comprehensive approach to preventing and managing these conditions. When a patient visits a doctor, the doctor will typically conduct a comprehensive evaluation, including a review of the patient's medical history, physical exam, and laboratory tests. If the patient is found to be obese, 
The doctor may discuss the potential health risks associated with obesity and recommend weight loss as a potential treatment option. The doctor may also discuss other lifestyle changes, such as diet and exercise, that can help improve overall health and reduce the risk of chronic disease. It is important to note that weight loss should never be the sole focus of a patient's treatment plan, and that individualized care plans should be developed to address the patient's unique health needs and goals. Additionally, Weight loss should be pursued in a healthy and balanced way, with an emphasis on sustainable lifestyle changes rather than fad diets or extreme measures. By working with a doctor to address obesity and other health concerns, patients can take an active role in their own health and well-being and improve their overall quality of life. Guys, do you remember the time when I posted an almost identical video to this? But I was told that I should avoid potatoes. I was given unwanted and unsolicited health advice when I was minding my own business, just making a cooking video. But I was told that I needed to avoid potatoes. Do you remember that? Do you remember how fat people and thin people are not allowed to exist in the same way on the internet? You remember that? Again, no hate to this guy. I have no issue with him. And I don't hate him. I'm not also not mad at him either. I am using his video as an example to compare how thin people and fat people are not treated the same way. So. People should avoid giving unsolicited advice because it can be perceived as intrusive, disrespectful, or even hurtful. While the intent may be to help. Unsolicited advice can often come across as judgmental and may be interpreted as an attempt to control the other person's behavior. Additionally, unsolicited advice can be unhelpful if the recipient is not open to hearing it or if the advice is not well informed. In the case of giving advice on what to eat to someone who is obese and struggling with eating, it is important to approach the situation with sensitivity and empathy. While obesity can have negative health consequences, it is a complex issue that can be influenced by a variety of factors, including genetics, environment, and individual choices. Furthermore, there is no one-size-fits-all solution to weight management, and what works for one person may not work for another. Before giving advice, it may be helpful to ask the person if they are open to receiving it and to approach the conversation in a non-judgmental and supportive way. It may also be useful to consider the individual's unique circumstances such as their access to healthy food options, their lifestyle, and their cultural background. In general, it is important to respect the autonomy of the person and to avoid making assumptions or generalizations about their situation. It is also important to recognize that weight management is a personal journey and that what works for one person may not work for another. Instead of giving unsolicited advice, it may be more helpful to offer support, encouragement, and resources such as healthy recipes or exercise options, that the individual can choose to utilize on their own terms.